What's up guys, I'm filming this video because I've been asked so much about my tiny home resort that I am building. I decided to put this together to answer some of the questions and ultimately to break down this deal for you and why I think it's gonna be a home run investment. So those of you who have been following along, you know that about a year ago, I purchased a property in Bryan Head, Utah with the intention of building a tiny home resort. Now I've been obsessed with this idea of tiny homes as probably a lot of you guys have. It seems to be like a craze for a lot of people. And in fact, about probably five years ago, maybe it hasn't been that long, maybe four years ago, I purchased some shipping container homes and I had four of them and I planned on finding some property and renting them out. And ultimately time just kept passing passing and I didn't do anything with them. I couldn't find the right property and so I eventually sold them. But the idea is this is something that I've wanted to do for quite a while now. I've had drawings that it's funny my wife found this in the drawer the other day which I don't even know when I drew this but it just tells you it's been on my mind for quite some time. So excited to finally start acting on the process and start putting it together. After purchasing this property over the last year I've been working with the city to really come up with the design that they're going to allow and what I want to do to ultimately create this tiny home resort. So I wanna break this deal down for you really on an investment side of things. But before we do that, I wanna first talk about tiny homes. And obviously it's something that is more of an experience and so people wanna go and stay there. The cool thing from like an investment standpoint is because it is smaller, it costs a little bit less to go and build. Now they're still expensive to build, like more expensive than probably what you're thinking because it still has a lot of the same fixtures. You still have to, you know, have the property, you still have to pay to hook on, into the property with utilities and all of those things. There's still a bathroom, there's still plumbing, all those things that make it more expensive than probably what you're thinking. But ultimately it's way less expensive than building, you know, a, a, a cabin or a house. Now the cool thing with tiny homes and being smaller is because it's more of an experience, you can get more rent out of it than you can get out of a, a typical condo or sometimes even like a smaller cabin. People wanna come and stay for the experience. And so for all these reasons, I was really attracted to the idea of it from an investment standpoint. I thought it would do really, really well. One thing that's cool about this design, we used a company that's called Zip Kits and kind of came up with a design that was going to work the best is that the way we did it was to maximize the ability to sleep as many people as possible without being crowded, but also just giving it an option to where if a family that have two kids or three kids wanted to come stay up here, they don't have to rent two different tiny homes and they can do it all in one tiny home. And so we kind of got creative with the design where we actually created this loft. It's a legal sleeping loft. It'll fit a queen bed up there or two twin beds. Put this in this nook right here. We did these bunk beds, two twin beds that'll fit right across from the bathroom. And then obviously we have the bedroom in the back to add some privacy. We'll have a queen bed back there. And then we also have this couch bed that'll fold out in this main room. If we wanted to, we could sleep up to eight people. Now, everybody always asks how much do these things cost? Well, what we ended up doing with this company called Zip Kits, we purchased basically the kit. So what's included in the price is they build everything off site. And what they'll do is they build it in these panel systems. So they build all the walls, they'll put the exterior siding on, they'll put the windows in all these things, They'll even build like the roof out and they ship it kind of stacked on top of each other. When it arrives, part of what we paid them to do is they'll set it all up and put it all together. The cool thing is it only takes a couple of days and the whole thing from the outside looks like it's completely finished. And so what we've then done is it's cool. It comes with part of the kit. It comes with all the flooring, all of the cabinets, pretty much everything we need on the inside. And so our contractor is putting all that together, finishing the flooring, tiling the showers, all those things to get it ready. Looking at this, I would say probably anywhere from $100,000 to $120,000. Keep in mind, this doesn't include utilities to get hooked up. This doesn't include all the site excavation and getting the property actually ready and everything else the city is requiring us to do, such as have a parking lot and pavement. We're also adding a sauna and a pergola and a playground and a fire pit. So all of that not included, but just looking at the unit itself, we're probably right around that price range. 
So now that you guys understand why tiny homes and, and why I love this idea of it, why Brian Head? And, and it's so interesting because a lot of people will hear about these different deals that I've done and they automatically assume, oh, I need to go invest in this area or I have to go invest in Brian Head or they'll find out where my other properties are, they're doing well. I need to go invest here, this is a hot market. And the reason I'm so open about this and open about the location is it's not so much like, oh, I need to invest here and buy any house in that market that makes it a good deal. It's you getting creative. And so this same deal, I know that I could take it and go put it in another area and it would do probably just as well because I make the investment, right? You're the one that's gonna decide, hey, is this a good investment? And you're the one that's gonna get creative and make it happen. And so, yes, there are some markets that are better than others, absolutely, right? But what it comes down to is your ability to make that a good deal and not just invest in a certain place because everybody else is investing there. For me, the reason I wanted to invest here and build here is because it's a place that I love to go to. It's close to a ski resort. I love to snowboard with my family and we've owned a condo here for the last five or six years. I didn't know how that was gonna do. I was able to rent that out and it's done pretty well. And so I thought, hey, this is just a one bedroom, one bath condo. What's a good way to replicate this on a, a larger scale? And that automatically resulted in, okay, let's build a tiny home community or a tiny home resort. And so I have a really good idea of how it's going to perform based on how my condo has performed the last five or six years that I've been renting it out. I know the high times, I know the low times. The cool thing about this location is in the winter time when a lot of the other places shut down, it stays open because people are coming there to snowboard and to ski, right? And to vacation with their families during the winter time. And so what's cool about that also is in the summertime, this property is still really good because people are traveling to come to mountain bike at the resort. They're coming to hike and go to all the national parks. So the idea was, how do I keep this as occupied all year round as possible? And this was a good location to be able to do that. So one question a lot of people ask is how you found the property. Was it a pain to get it zoned right? What is the zoning that you needed to get approved? Because a lot of people want to do something like this. Ultimately for me, I knew it was something I wanted to do for for a while and so with that I contacted the city first I first wanted to make sure before I went down this whole rabbit hole hey because there's nothing like this that exists yet is it something that you guys allow is it something you guys would be for what are the pros and cons of it what does that look like and I really just tried to get as much information out of the city as possible ultimately I found out they were pretty open to the idea and even though nobody had done it they definitely weren't against it I also talked to them about the zoning and what that would look like. They directed me in the right location to where I went to the city website. I then looked up the zoning requirements and figured out, okay, it needs to be this type of zoning. In this case, it was an R3, which basically means multifamily. Same exact zoning that you would go and build, let's say condominiums or an apartment complex on. And so once I knew that, I was able to go to the city website and I looked up the zoning map. The cool thing with these zoning maps is it's color coordinated. So it's really easy to see which areas are going to be zoned for which types of properties. And so once I knew that, then I directed my efforts towards, okay, what's in this area that's for sale or maybe potentially somebody I could reach out to and ask them if they're willing to sell. Long story short, I was up snowboarding one day, driving around close to the resort, and I see this for sale by owner sign. And so I thought, hey, this is awesome. This looks like right in the perfect location. I called the owner, he said yes. He also said he'd be willing to owner finance it, but there was some different complications with that and it was more of a shorter term thing and so it didn't really seem to work out. And so ultimately he said, hey, I'd owner finance it, but it was gonna be high interest or I'll just take all cash for the property. And so I went under contract with him. He gave me 30 days to close. I gave him $5,000 of my earnest money, but ultimately our agreement was within that 30 days, I needed to pay him all cash. And so it put me in a spot which I'll get into in a second. And this was my actual first deal that I ever partnered on. And I'll show you how I did that and why I did that in, in a second. But what was really cool with the way that this was strategized was basically, okay, I'm buying this property. It was four lots all together. And I knew that it was gonna be a good deal. I knew I'd put so much work into it leading up to it. And so I knew that I could go and find a partner to put in a majority of the cash because I had already taken care of a lot of the work. I already nailed this property down. I already 
basically put in a lot of the time that was going to require to make a deal like this work. Not to mention I had the experience of real estate investing. I had the experience of already managing a nightly rental for the last five or six years in that area. And so all those reasons, I knew that I could bring this deal to somebody and they would bring in the money fairly easy. And if someone didn't do it, I could take it to another investor and there's a good chance that they would probably do it. So ultimately I found the partner and we executed on the deal. I still remember the day that he actually wired me the money that was gonna cover all of the lot in cash. We set up an LLC where we're both 50-50 partners on it and it was an awesome day for me because I just remember that coming in and, and hitting my account and I was like, holy smokes, this, this worked. This partner thing actually worked. This is going through, closed on the deal, got the property under both of our names. Now back up a little bit, what's really cool about this and the way that the whole thing was structured, I knew that it was such a good deal that one of the lots, like I said, it was, it was four lots total. One of the lots I knew I wanted to keep and I wanted it for a cabin lot or I wanted it just for me to be able to do something with later on. And I knew the deal still made sense with just doing the three other lots and leaving this other one a part of it and, and not part of the deal. And so I was very upfront about that. And the investor, he was totally fine with that because he still believed this was gonna make sense. And so we executed the deal. The one lot's in my name, the other three lots are in both of our names. So really cool because not to go off on a tangent, but with that lot in the future, it's completely paid off. I can leverage that lot to get a down payment with the bank to go build a cabin on, to rent that cabin out, or to go do more tiny homes or whatever I want with it. But it's really cool because it was a strategy for me to get this lot that's now has a ton of equity in it and I can do so many different things with it to ultimately eventually build passive income but doesn't require me to use money to go build a big project or something like that on it because it's paid off and there's equity in it. So back to these three lots, what we decided to do is take it by phases and actually build each thing within the lot boundaries. So as we did these tiny homes, we wanted to make it so we had an exit strategy to where if we wanted to sell a chunk of it off down the road once it's performing well, we had the ability to do that because as we built it, it met all of the setback requirements to be its own kind of lot basically. And so this was important because ultimately like you wanna begin with the end in mind and just having the ability to have this exit strategy of, okay, this is really cool. We could you know, sell half of it off to another investor or someone down the road and let's say make a million dollars and then take that extra million dollars that we made on that project and pay off the, the other section of the lot with all of those tiny homes and now we own it free and clear. And so just so you understand, that's kind of the thought process for like the long-term results. Not that we have plans to do that, but it's an option and it's a good exit strategy, which is really cool. So once we had this lot under contract, once we've actually purchased the lot and owned it, the next step was to really start designing what we wanted to do. Like I said, ultimately we decided to purchase our homes from Zip Kits. They're local, we really like the owner, and so it ended up being a good fit. And so we went through with that, and then I got together with my architect, and we design something that was going to fit on this plan, this site that would really work and make the most sense. What I want to talk to you guys about is this first phase that we're doing, which is it's only six units total. The cool thing with each of these six units, obviously we have a parking lot. We also added a little sauna area that's going to have washer and dryer units as well as a soda machine or a snack machine in there and a sauna. And so we really wanted to create this like environment to where people could come and rent it out as a family, as a couple, or they could rent the entire piece out as a family reunion or something like that and all feel close together and there's a pergola and outdoor kitchen and stuff like that. And so really wanted to create this ultimately because we had the property paid for in cash, we leveraged that towards the bank as our down payment on this loan to buy all of the units and to put all the infrastructure in and to handle all the excavation and putting the piping in and all of those things. Something that was important when we bought this property is we bought it knowing that we could tie into city water, city power, we didn't have to have anything off grid and we could tie into city sewer and not have to worry about a septic tank. Because of the location of this being up in the mountains, we also didn't have to worry about any AC because it stays really cool up there. So we just put fans in there and then obviously there's heaters for the winter time so that people can stay warm. A big thing that comes up is how did you get all this approved with the city? Was that a pain to, to structure all that and to figure all that out? 
and like yes it was <laughs> just because nothing's ever as easy as it seems and everything always costs more than what you initially planned for and so keep that in mind with whatever you're doing especially when it comes to developments and new construction working with the city like First, I went and presented this plan that my architect kind of put together and go to city city review. They all looked at it and gave us an approval on it, said, hey, this looks good. We just shouldn't have any issues with this. They had a few suggestions with trash cans and dumpsters and, and having areas to make sure we had enough space to store snow in the wintertime when they came and plowed the roads. One thing I've learned is, especially when you're working with the city is it's always on their timetable, meaning like they're never in a huge hurry to help you out. So if you're trying to rush to get something done, usually like they're not going at the same pace as you. And so it's always gonna take longer to get things back, to get things approved. And so sometimes you just have to take that into account because that can hold you up on your construction and your building and, and how to actually go through with the project. So we're in the phase currently where everything's been approved, we're good on the loan, and what we're doing now is just starting to break ground. Now the cool thing with these homes and the way we're doing them with Zipkiz is it's not, they're building everything off site right now. They've ordered the windows, the trusses, they'll build, like I said, all of those walls off site and bring it in and set it up in a couple of days. So it saves us a lot of time, which that's exactly what we're battling against because it is a snow resort, right? It's a snowboard ski resort. There's gonna be snow up there, it's up on the mountain. So if we don't get it done in time, then we're pushed off till like about eight months from now to where things soften up and the snow melts and we can build again. So we're on a time crunch to get everything all done. They've just started breaking ground on that and working on that. So obviously we'll keep you updated. We'll do more videos to come, but I wanted to last but not least, give you guys an outlook on a numbers perspective. So keep in mind, I'm into this deal a lot of time and not very much money. What ended up happening was they took all of the equity in the land and they said, hey, we want about 5% more into the deal. So they wanted a 30% down total to finance the entire project. And so my deal with my partner was he was gonna pay up to 25% of the entire project. And my job was to bring in the extra 5%. So just to be 100% transparent with you guys, this section right here is gonna cost us about a million bucks, right? So it was my job to bring in about $50,000. Now, here's what's really, really cool. Each unit is projected, if we go off of what my condo's done and what we think that they'll do and looking at different properties and researching a lot in the area and even using a website called AirDNA, which helps you know what your nightly rental is gonna rent for, we project these to go for an average of about $4,000 per month. Now that's about what my condo did. So these might even be a little bit more closer to the $6,000 a month range. But at the end of the day, it's all speculation and who really knows until we actually get them rented out. I always love to do my math based on the worst case scenario and based on the lower number versus based on the best case scenario and all said and done, you're surprised that you're not making as much money as you thought you were going to. I'd rather be surprised that I'm making way more and I'm getting a better return than I originally thought I was. So if we do some quick math, I got my calculator here. I know that I have six units total that each are gonna average about $4,000 per month, okay? So I'm gonna take that $4,000, multiply that by six of the units, and that's gonna bring me about $24,000 a month off of six units. Obviously, not all of that is cash flow, okay? We gotta take out our expenses out of that and our mortgage, basically our payment to the bank, they're financing it over a 20 year term, just so you guys are aware, so you know. So over that 20 year term, I have to pay them back the money that we borrowed, right? Which is about 700,000 bucks, because we had the 30% down, right? And they financed the rest on a million dollars. So this $700,000 spread out plus interest over 20 years, my payment to them is about $4,500, okay? Now we're gonna have some expenses other than just the mortgage payment to them, which is gonna be snow removal during the winter months. We're gonna have to pay for utilities, obviously, because we're not gonna charge that to the tenants. Good thing is there's not a ton of expense when it comes to utilities and water. It just doesn't cost that much money um, because we're not blasting AC either. Another good thing is the cleaning fees. Obviously we're not paying for those, right? 
those people who book the places and are staying there, ultimately they're responsible for paying the cleaning fee. So that's nice, that takes care of that. We'll have a few other expenses when it comes down to it, such as like maintenance, such as upkeep, landscaping, different things like that will make sure the property is well taken care of. All in all, it's not gonna be that expensive. I always like to round up, so we'll just say it's gonna cost us an extra thousand bucks a month just for maintenance on this property. We add those together and we're looking at about $5,500 in expenses per month. We subtract that from our 24,000 bucks. That gives us a total of $18,500 per month. Now, obviously I'm splitting this 50-50 with my partner. So what I'm gonna do is divide that by two so I know how much money roughly each of us are taking home on a monthly basis. So that puts me a little over nine grand. I also wanna look at, hey, how much money is that gonna make me throughout the year? Multiply that by 12, and that is over $100,000. It's $111,000 on my investment of about $50,000 and a lot of time and a lot of energy. So what's really cool is we wanna take it to the next step and find out the return that I'm getting. I wanna take this number and divide it by the amount of money that I put into the deal, which was $50,000, and that gives me a return of 222%. That's a cash on cash return of 222%. So what's crazy about this is this one deal, even if you had to go borrow the 50 grand and pay interest on it, right? This is an amazing deal. It's gonna allow you to really retire if you wanted to and you could live off of 100 plus grand every year for the rest of your life. So not to, not to break it down at a point of like, oh, look at me and look what I did, look what I've been able to create, but like sincerely to break it down in an aspect of like real estate investing, if you do it the right way, is incredible. It's absolutely amazing. There are so many strategies that you can go and ultimately build your future off of. And it just takes a little bit of work and initial effort in the beginning. And it could be something that pays you the rest of your life. The cool thing with this is we're only talking about one section of the property. And so really my investment or my return on my investment, we haven't even got into the second phase where we're gonna build 11 units on this top phase right here, this next property. And we haven't even talked about what I'm gonna do with my extra lot that I put a cabin on and what that's gonna run out for. So all in all, this is a crazy, crazy deal. And obviously not all of them are like this, but ultimately I wanted to be as transparent as possible and break everything down for you because I think you have the ability to go do the same thing. Not necessarily in the same market or the same exact tiny homes or whatever, but like just within real estate, understanding these concepts and how it works and how to actually put a good partnership together can make you a lot of money. Now. Is it going to rent out for $4,000 a month every single month? I don't know. There's a chance it could rent for $6,000 a month each property every single month, right? There's a chance that it's really, really popular and we raise it even more than that. But ultimately, it could also rent out for closer to $3,000 a month. And so I want to look at all these things and factor those into my potential returns. And so it's important to really understand that. And at the end of the day, this is still being built. Hopefully it's done in the next couple of months and you all can come and check it out and come stay here. And we can really know what the numbers are actually going to be and look like. And I would definitely do a follow-up video to break it down even further once we are at that point.